gentlemen. Tonight, we are reading The Tragedy of Tragedies, or The Life and Death of Tom Thumb the Great, by Henry Fielding. Tonight, playing King Arthur. Shaul Rick Chason. Playing Tom Thumb the Great. Hello, Kevin Bain. Playing Ghost of Gafar Thumb and Foodie and Bailiff. Marty Goldberg. Playing Lord Grizzle. Richard Thompson. Playing Merlin and Doodle. Bernie Bozio. Playing Noodle. David Mackler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Playing Queen Dalalala. Maya Rath. Playing the Princess Hunkamunka. <laughs> Tiffany Rasach. <laughs> <laughs> playing Glumdalka. Swachada Guhamalik. And playing Cleora and Mustacha, Maria Elena Ardolino. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. And go. There is, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, I'm on the wrong page. Uh, no. Here, scene, the court of King Arthur and a plain thereabouts. Act one, scene one. Scene is at the palace with Noodle and Doodle. Sure, such a day as this was never seen. The sun himself on this auspicious day shines like a bowl in a new birthday suit. This down the seams embroidered that the beams all nature wears one universal grin. This day, oh, Mr. Doodle, is a day indeed, a day we never saw before. The mighty Thomas Thumb victorious comes Millions of giants crowd his chariot wheels. Giants to whom the giants in Guild Hall are infant dwarfs. They frown and foam and roar, while Thumb, regardless of their noise, rides on. So some cock sparrow in a farmer's yard hops at the head of a huge flock of turkeys. Ah, uh, when Goody Thumb first brought this Thomas forth, the genius of our land triumphant reign. Then, then, oh, Arthur did die genius reign. They tell me it is whispered in the books of all our sages that this mighty hero by Merlin's art begot hath not a bone within his skin, but is a lump of grizzle. Ooh. Then tis a gristle of no mortal kind, some god might doodle stepped into the place of Gaffer Thumb and more than half forgot this mighty Tom. Sure, he was sent express from heaven to be the pillar of our state. Though small his body be, so very small. A chairman's leg is more than twice as large, yet is his soul like any mountain big. And as a mountain, once brought forth a mouse, so doth this mouse contain a mighty mountain. Mountain indeed. So terrible his name, the giant nurses frighten children with it. Ah! And cry, Tom Thumb is come! And if you are naughty, we'll surely take the child away! But hark! These trumpets speak the king's approach. He comes most luckily for my petition. Flourish. Scene two. King, Queen, Grizzle, Noodle, Doodle, Poodle. Let nothing but a face of joy appear. The man who frowns this day shall lose his head, that he may have no face to frown withal. Smile, Lola Lola. Ha! Ah, what a wrinkled sorrow hangs, sits, lies, frowns upon thy knitted brow. Whence flow those tears fast down thy blubbered cheeks like a swollen gutter? gushing through the streets. Excess of joy, my lord, I've heard folks say, gives tears as certain as excess of grief. If it be so, that all men cry for joy, till my whole court be drowned with their tears, nay, till they overflow my utmost land, and leave me nothing but the sea to rule. My liege, I a petition have here got, Petition me no petition, sir, today. Let other hours be set apart for business. Today it is our pleasure to be drunk, and this our queen shall be as drunk as we. 
though I already half seas over am. If the capacious goblet overflow with Eric punch for George, I'll see it out. Of rum and brandy, I'll taste not a drop. Though rack in punch, for eight shillings be a quart, and rum and brandy be no more than six, rather than quarrel, you shall have your will. Trumpets. But ha, the warrior comes, great <laughs> strong thumb, the little hero, giant killing boy, preserver of my kingdom, is arrived. Scene three, Tom Thumb to them with officers, prisoners, and attendants. Oh, welcome most, most welcome to my arms. What gratitude can thank away the debt your valor lays upon me? Oh, ye gods. When I'm not thanked at all, I'm thanked enough. I've done my duty, and I've done no more. Was ever such a godlike creature seen? Thy modesty is a candle to thy merit. It shines itself and shews thy merit too. But say, my boy, where didst thou leave the giants? My liege, without the castle gates they stand, the castle gates too low for their admittance. What look they like? Like nothing but themselves. And sure thou art like nothing but thyself. Enough. The vast idea fills my soul. I see them, yes, I see them now before me, the monstrous, ugly, barbarous sons of whores. But ha, huh, what form majestic strikes our eyes, so perfect that it seems to have been drawn by all the gods in council. So fair she is, that surely at her birth the council paused, and then at length cried out, this is a woman. Then were the gods mistaken, she is not a woman. But a giantess, whom we with much ado have made as swift to haul within the town, for she is by a foot shorter than all her subjects' giants were. We yesterday were both a queen and wife. One hundred thousand giants owned our sway. Twenty whereof were married to ourselves. Oh, happy state of giantism where husbands like mushrooms grow, while hapless we are forced to be content, nay, happy, thought with one. But then, to lose them all in one black day, that the same sun which rising saw me wife to twenty giants, setting should behold me widowed of them all, my worn out heart, that ship leaks fast, and the great heavy laden, my soul will quickly sink. Madam, believe, I view your sorrows with a woman's eye, but learn to bear them with what strength you may. Tomorrow, we will have our grenadiers drawn out before you, and you then shall choose what husbands you think fit. Madam, I am your most obedient and most humble servant. Think, mighty princess, think this court your own, nor thank the landlord me, this house my inn. Call for whate'er you will, will nothing pay. I feel a sudden pain within my breast, nor know I whether it arise from love or only the wind colic. Time must shew. O oh, Thumb, what do we to thy valor owe? Ask some reward. Great as we can bestow. I ask not kingdoms, I can conquer those. I ask not money, money I've enough. For what I've done and what I mean to do for giants slain and giants yet unborn, which I will slay, if this be called a debt, take my receipt in full. I ask but this, to sun myself in hunker monica's eyes. Prodigious bold request. He's Still my soul. My heart is at the threshold of your mouth and waits its answer there. Oh, do not frown. I tried to reason's tune to tune my soul, but love did overwind and crack the string, though Jove in thunder had cried out, you shan't. I should have loved her still for own strange fate than when I loved her least. I love her most. His resolved. The princess is your own. 
Oh, happy, 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 happy come! Consider, sir, reward your soldier's merit, but give not hunkamunka to Tom Thumb. Tom Thumb? Hot zooks, my wide extended realm knows not a name so glorious as Tom Thumb. Let Macedonia, Alexander boasts. Let Rome be her Caesars and her Scipios show. Her Messios friends, that Holland boasts many ears. Ireland her oaths, her max that stop and boast, that England boasts no other than Tom Thumb. Though greater yet his boasted merit was, he shall not have my daughter, that is pos. Ha! Sayest thou, Dolalola? I say he shan't. Then by our royal self we swear you lie. Who but a dog, who but a dog would use me as thou dost? Me, who have lain these twenty years so lovingly by thy side. But I will be revenged, I'll hang myself. Then tremble all who did this match persuade. For riding on a cat from high, I'll fall and squirt down royal vengeance on you all. Ooh, Her Majesty the Queen is in a passion. Be she, or be she not, I'll to the girl and pave thy way, O Thumb. Now, by ourselves, we were indeed a pretty king of clouts to trickle to her will. For when by force or art the wife her husband overreaches, give him the petticoat and her the breeches. Whisper ye winds that hunker monica's mine. Echoes, repeat, that Hanka Monica's mine. The dreadful business of the war is over, and beauty, heavenly beauty, crowns my toils. I've thrown the bloody garment now aside, and by many old sweets invite my bride. So when some chimney sweeper all the day hath through dark paths pursued the sooty way at night, to wash his hands and faces, he flies, and in his tother's shirt with his brick duster lies. Scene four, Grizzle, Solace. Where art thou, Grizzle? Where are nigh thou glories? Where are thou drums that waken thee uh, to honor? Greatness is a lacked coat from Monmouth Street which fortune lend us for a day to wear, tomorrow puts us in another back. This spiteful son, but yesterday surveyed, his rival, high as St. Paul Cupula. Now may he see me, his fleet ditch laid low. Scene five, Queen and Grizzle. Teach me to scold, prodigious-minded Grizzle. Mountain of treason, ugly as the devil, Teach this confounded hateful mouth of mine to spout forth words malicious as thyself, words which might shame all Billingsgate to speak. Or be it from my pride to think my tongue, your royal lips can in that art instruct wherein you so excel. But may I ask, with our offense, wherefore my queen would scold? Wherefore, oh, blood and thunder, haven't you heard what every corner of the court resounds? That little thumb will be a great man made. I heard it, I confess, for who, alas, can always stop his ears? But would my teeth by grinding knives had first been set on edge? Would I had heard at the still noon of night the hallelu of fire in every street. Odds bods, I have a mind to hang myself, to think I should be a grandmother be made by such a rascal. Sure the king forgets when in a pudding by his mother put, the bastard by a tinker on a stile was dropped. Oh, good Lord Grizzle. Can I bear to see him from a pudding mount the throne? Or can, oh, can my hunka monka bear to take a pudding's offspring to her arms? Oh, horror, 
horror, horror, cease my queen. Thy voice like twenty screeched owls racks my brain. Then rouse thy spirit. We may yet prevent this hated match. We will, not fate itself. Should it conspire with Thomas Thumb should cause it. I'll swim through seas, I'll ride upon clouds, I'll dig the earth, I'll blow out every fire. I'll rave, I'll rant, I'll rise, I'll rush, I'll roar. Fierce as the man whom smiling dolphins bore. From the prosiac to potic shore, I'll tear the scoundrel into 20 pieces. Oh, no, prevent the match, but hurt him not. For though I would not have him have my daughter, yet we can kill, can we kill the man that killed the giants? I tell you, madam, it was all a trick. He made the giants first and then he'd kill them as fox hunters bring foxes to the wood and then with hounds they drive them out again. How? Have you seen no giants? Are there not now in the yard 10,000 proper giants? Indeed, I cannot positively tell, but firmly do believe there is not one. Hence, from my sight, Thou traitor, high away, by all my stars, thou envious Tom Thumb. Go, sirrah, go high away, high. Thou art a setting dog, be gone. Madam, I go. Tom Thumb shall feel the vengeance you have raised. So when two dogs are fighting in the street, with a third dog, one of two dogs meets. With angry teeth, he bites him to the bone. And this dog smarts for what the dog had done. Scene six, Queen Sola. And whither shall I go? Alack a day, I love Tom Thumb, but must not tell him so. For what's a woman when her virtue's gone? A coat without its lace, wig out of a buckle, a stocking with a hole in it. I can't live without my virtue or without Tom Thumb. Then let me weigh them in two equal scales. In this scale, my virtue, that Tom Thumb. Alas, Tom Thumb is heavier than my virtue. <laughs> but hold, perhaps I may be left a widow this match prevented, then Tom Thumb is mine. In that dear hope, I will forget my pain. So when some wish to taught the bride well sent with beating hemp and flogging, she's content. She hopes in time to ease her present pain. At length is free and walks the streets again. End of act one. Act two, scene one, scene, the street, bailiff and follower. Come on, my trusty follower, come on. This day discharge thy duty, and at night a double mug of beer, and beer shall glad thee. Stand here by me, this way must noodle pass. No more, no more, O bailiff. Every word inspires my soul with virtue. Oh, I long to meet the enemy in the street and nab him, to lay arresting hands upon his back and drag him trembling into the sponging house. There, when I have him, I will sponge upon him. Oh, glorious thought, by the sun, moon, and stars, I will enjoy it, though it be in thought. Yes, yes, my follower, I will enjoy it. Enjoy it then some other time, for now our prey approaches. Let us retire. <laughs> Scene two, Tom Thumb, Noodle, Bailiff, and Follower. Trust me, my Noodle, I am wondrous sick, for though I love the gentle who monka monka, yet at the thought of marriage, I grow pale. But oh, but swear thou keep it as secret, 
I will untold a tale. We'll make these stay. I swear by I love. Swear. Then no, my grandmama hath often said, Colin Tom, beware of marriage. Sir, I blush. To think a warrior great in arms as you should be affrighted by his grandmama. Can an old woman's empty dreams deter the blooming hero from the virgin's arms? Think of the joy that will your soul alarm when in her fond, oh, uh, what, uh, what, when in her fond embraces clasped you lie while on her panting breast dissolved in bliss you pour out all Tom Thumb in every kiss. Oh, Noodle, thou hast fired my eager soul. Spite of my grandmother's, she shall be mine. I'll hug, caress, I'll eat her up with love. Whole days and nights and years shall be too short for our enjoyment. Every sun will rise, blutching to see us in our bed together. <laughs> oh, sir, this purpose of your soul, pursue. <laughs> Oh, sir, I have an action against you. At whose suit is it? At your tailor's, sir. Uh, your tailor put this warrant in my hands. And I arrest you, sir, at his commands. Don't arrest my friend before my face. Think you Tom Thumb will suffer this disgrace, but let vain cowards threaten by their word. Tom Thumb shall shew his anger by the sword. He kills the bailiff and his follower. <laughs> oh, I am slain. Good. <laughs> I am murdered also. And to the shades, the dismal shades below, my bailiff's faithful follower I go. Go then to hell, like rascals as you are, and give our service to the bailiffs there. <laughs> perish all the bailiffs in the land, till death is at noonday shall walk the streets, and no one fear a bailiff or his writ. <laughs> Scene three, the Princess Hunkamunka's apartment. Hunkamunka, Cleora, Mustacha. Ah, oh, give me some music. S see that it be sad. Cupid, ease a lovesick maid, bring thy quiver to her aid. With equal honor, wound the swain, beauty should never sigh in vain. Let him feel the pleasing smart, drive thy arrow through his heart. When one you wound, you then destroy. When both you kill, you kill with joy. Oh, Tom Thumb. Tom Thumb, wherefore art thou Tom Thumb? Why hadst thou not been born of royal race? Why had not mighty Bantam been thy father? Or else the king of Brentford, old or new? I am surprised that your highness can give yourself a moment's uneasiness about that little insignificant fellow, Tom Thumb the Great. One prospera for a plaything, then a husband. Were he my husband, his horn should be as long as his body. If you had fallen in love with the grenadier, I should not have wondered at it. If you had fallen in love with something, but to fall in love with nothing. Cease, cease my mustache on thy duties, cease. The zephyr, when in flowery whales it plays, is not so soft, so sweet as Thummy's breath. The dove is not so gentle as to mate. The dove is every bit as proper for a husband. Alas, madam, there's not a bow about the court. Looks so like a man. Looks so little like a man. He's a perfect butterfly, a thing without substance, and almost without shadow, too. This rudeness is unseasonable. This is or I shall think this railing comes from love. Tom Thumb's a creature of that charming form that no one can abuse. 
Unless that they love him. Madam the King. Scene four, King and Hunkamunka. It's all about Hunkamunka. Leave the room. Daughter, I have observed of late some grief, unusual in your countenance, for eyes that, like two open windows, used to shew that lovely beauty of the rooms within, have now two blinds before them. What is the cause? Say, have you not enough of meat and drink? Given strict orders not to have you stinted? Oh, alas, my lord, I value not myself. At once I eat two fowls and half a pig. Small is that praise, but, oh, a maid may want what she can neither eat nor drink. What's that? Oh, spare my blushes, but I mean a husband. If that be all, I have provided one. A husband great in arms, his warlike sword streams with the yellow blood of slaughtered giants, whose name in terra incognita is known, whose valor, wisdom, virtue make a noise, great as the kettle drums of twenty arms. Who does my royal father mean? Tom Thumb. Is it possible? Ha! The window blinds are gone. A country dance of joy is in your face. Your eyes spit fire. Your cheek grow red as beef. Oh, there's the magic music in that sound enough to turn me into beef indeed. Yes, I will own, since licensed by your word, I'll, I'll owe Tom Thumb the cause of all my grief. For him I sighed, I've wept, I've gnawed my sheets. Oh, thou shalt gnaw thy tender sheets no more. A husband thou shalt have to mumble now. Oh, happy sound! Henceforth let no one tell that Hunkamunka shall let eights in hell. Oh, I am overjoyed. I see thou art. Joy lightens in thy eyes and thunders from thy brows. Transports like lightning dart along thy soul. A small shout through a hedge. Oh, say not small. This happy news shall on our tongue ride boast. Our self will bear the happy news to thumb. Yet think not, daughter that your powerful charms must still detain the hero from his arms. Various his duty, various his delight. Now is his turn to kiss, and now to fight, and now to kiss again. So mighty Jove, when with excessive thundering tried above, comes down to earth and takes a bit, and then flies to his trade of thundering back in. Scene five, Grizzle and Hunkamunka. Oh, hunkamunka, hunkamunka, oh, thy pouting breasts like kettle drums of brass beat everlasting loud alarms of joy, as bright as brass they are, and oh, as hard, oh, hunkamunka, hunkamunka, oh. Ha! Dost thou know me, princess as I am, that this of me you dare to make your game? Oh, hunkamunka, well, I know that you, a princess are, and a king's daughter too. But love no meanness, scorns no grandeur, fears. Love often lords into the cellar bare, and bids the sturdy porter come upstairs. For what too high for love, or what's too low? Oh, hunkamunka, hunkamunka, oh. But granting all you say of love were true, my love, alas, is to another Jew. In vain to me is suitoring you come, for I'm already promised to thumb, Tom Thumb. Ah, and can my princess such a dirgeon wed, one fitter for your pocket than your bed? Advised by me, the worthless baby shun, or you would ne'er be brought to bed of one. Oh, take me to thy arms and never flinch. Who am I a man by Jupiter every inch? Ah, uh, oh, then while in joys there together lost we lie, I'll press thy soul while God stand wishing by. If, sir, what you insinuate you prove, all obstacles of promise you remove. For all engagements to man must fall, never that man is proved no man at all. Oh, let him seek some dwarf, some fairy miss, where no joint stool must lift him to the kid. But by the stars in glory you appear much fitter for a Prussian grandeur. One globe alone on the Atlas shoulders rests, two globes are less than Hunkamunka's breasts. The Milky Way is not so white, that's flat, and sure thy breasts are full and large as that. 
Oh, sorry, so strong your eloquence, I find it is impossible to be unkind. Ah, speak that o'er again and let the sound from one pole to another pole rebound. The earth and sky each be a battle door and keep the sound that shuttle cock up an hour to doctor's commons for a license I swift as an arrow from a pole will fly. Oh no, oh no, lest some disaster we should meet. It's for better to be married at the fleet. Ha, ah, forbid it. All ye powers of princess should by that vile place contaminate her blood. My quick return shall my charmer prove. I travel on the post horses of love. Those post horses to me will seem too slow, though they should fly swift as the gods when they ride on behind that post boy opportunity. Scene six, Tom Thumb, Hunka Munka. Where is my princess? Where's my hunka monka? Where are those eyes, those card matches of love that light up all with love my waxen soul? Where is that face which artful nature made in the same moulds where Venus self was cast? Oh, what is music to the ear that's deaf or a goose pied of Tim that has no taste? What are these praises now to me since I am promised to another? <laughs> Promised? Too sure. It's written in the Book of Fate. Then I will tear away the leaf within its writ, or if fate won't allow so large a gap within its journal book, I'll blot it out at least. <laughs> Scene seven. <clears throat> Glumdalka, Tom Thumb, Hunka Munka. I need not ask if you are Hunka Munka. Your brandy nose proclaims. I am a princess, nor need I ask who you are. Giantess, the queen of those who made and unmade queens. The man whose chief ambition is to be my sweetheart hath destroyed these mighty giants. Your sweetheart? <laughs> Dost thou think the man who once hath worn my easy chains Will air wear thine? Well, may your chains be easy, since if fame says true, they have been tried on by twenty husbands. The god of war boot, so many times pulled on, may well sit easy on the hand or foot. I glory in the number, and when I sit poorly down, like thee, content with one, heaven change this face for one as bad as thine. Let me see nearer what this beauty is that captivates the heart of men by scores. Oh! Oh, heavens. Thou art as ugly as the devil. You would give the best of shoes within your shop to be but half so handsome. <laughs> Since you come to that, I'll put my beauty to the test. Tom Thumb, I'm yours. If you with me, we'll go. Oh, stay, Tom Thumb, and you alone shall fill that bed where twenty giants used to lie. In the balcony that overhangs the stage, I've seen a whore two apprentices engage. One half a crown does in his fingers hold, the other shoes a little piece of gold. She the half guinea wisely does her line and leaves the larger and the baser coin. <laughs> Exeunt all but Glendalka. Left scorned and loathed for such a cheat <coughs> as this, I feel the storm that rising in my mind, tempests and whirlwinds rise and growl and roar. I'm all within a hurricane as if the world's four winds were bent within my carcass. Confusion, horror, murder, guts, and death. <sighs> Scene eight, King and Glendalka. Sure never was so sad a king as I. My life is worn as ragged as a coat a beggar wears. A prince should put it off to love a captive and a giantess. Oh, love. O oh, love, how great a king art thou! My tongue's thy trumpet, 
and thou trumpetest, unknown to me, within me, O Glumdalka, heaven thee designed a giantess to make, but an angelic soul was shuffled in. I am a multitude of walking griefs, and only on her lips the balm is found, to spread a plaster that might cure them all. What do I hear? What do I see? Oh. Ah. Ah, oh, wretched queen. Oh, wretched king. Ah. Oh. Oh. Uh, scene nine. Tom Thumb, Punkamunka, Parson. Anybody? Want to be a parson? Happy's the wooing that's not long a doing. For if I guess aright, Tom Thumb this night shall give a being to a new Tom Thumb. It shall be my endeavor so to do. Oh, fie upon you, sir. You do make me blush. It is a virgin sign and suits you well. I know not where nor how nor what I am. I'm so transported. I have lost myself. <laughs> Forbid it, all ye stars, for you're so small that you were lost, you find yourself no more. So the unhappy sempstress once, they say, her needle in a puddle lost of hay. In vain she looked and looked and made her moan, for ah, the needle was forever gone. Long may they live and love and propagate. Till the whole land be peopled with Tom Thumbs. So when the Cheshire cheese a maggot breeds, another and another still succeeds by thousands and ten thousands they increase till one continued maggot fills the rotten cheese. Scene 10, Noodle and then Grizzle. Sure. Nature means to break her solid chain, or else unfix the world, and in a rage to hurl it from its axle tree and hinges. All things are so confused. The king's in love, the queen is drunk, the princess married is. Oh, Noodle, hast thou Uncle Monka seen? <laughs> I've seen a thousand sights this day where none are by the wonderful bitch herself outdone. The king, the queen, and all the court are sights. Damn your delay, you trifler, are you drunk? Ha, I will not hear one word but Uncle Munka. By this time, she is married to Tom Thumb. My Uncle Munka? Your Uncle Munka. Tom Thumb's hunkamunka. Every man's hunkamunka. Wah, 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 wah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if this be true, all womankind are damned. If it be not, may I be so myself. See where she comes. I'll not believe a word against that face upon whose ample brow sits innocence with majesty enthroned. Grizzle Where and Hunkamunka. My... Where has my Hunkamunka been? See here the license in my hand. Alas, Tom Thumb. Why dost thou mention him? Oh, me, Tom Thumb. What means my lovely Hunkamunka? Mm. Oh, speak. Mm. Ha! Your every word is a hum. You force me still to answer you, Tom Thumb. Tom Thumb, I'm the rack. I'm in a flame. Tom Thumb, Tom Thumb, Tom Thumb. You love the name? So pleasing is that sound that were you dumb, you still would find a voice to cry. Tom Thumb? Oh, be not hasty to proclaim my doom. My ample heart for more than one has room. A maid like me, have been formed for at least for two. I married him, now I'll marry you. Ha! 
Dost thou own thy falsehood to my face? Thinks thou I will share thy husband's place? Since to that office one cannot suffice, and since you scorn to dine one single dish on, go, get your husband put into commission. Commissioners to discharge, ye gods, it fine is, the duty of a husband to your highness. Yet think no lot long I will my rival bear. Yet think not long I will my rival bear, or unrevenged thy slightest will aware. The gloomy, brooding tempest now confined with the hollow caverns of my mind in dreadful whirl shall rowl along the coasts, shall thin the land of all the men it boasts, and cram up every chink of hell with ghosts. So have I seen in some dark winter's day, a oh, sudden storm rush down the sky highway, sweep through the streets with terrible ding dong gush through the sprouts and wash whole crowds along. The crowded shops, the thronging vermin screen, together cram the dirty and the clean, and not one shoe boy in the street is seen. Oh, fatal rashness should his fury slay. My hapless bridegroom on his wedding day, I, who this morn of two choose which to wed, May go again this night alone to bed. So have I seen some wild and subtle fool who had her choice of this and that joint stool to give the preference to either, loath and fondly coveting to sit on both. <laughs> While the two stools her sitting part confound, between them both fall squat upon the ground. End of Act Two. Act three, scene one, King Arthur's palace, ghost, solace. Hail, O ye black horrors of midnight's mid-noon, ye fairies, goblins, bats, screech owls. Hail, and O ye mortal watchmen whose hoarse throats the immortal ghosts dread croaking's counterfeits. All hail, ye dancing phantoms who by day are some condemned to fast, some feast in fire. Now play in churchyards, skipping over the graves to the loud music of the silent bell. All hail. <laughs> Act two, king and ghost. What noise is this? What villain dares, at this dread hour, with feet and voice for pain, disturb our royal walls? One who defies the empty power to hurt him, one who dares walk by thy bedchamber. Presumptuous slave, thou diest! Ah, threaten others with that word, I am a ghost, <laughs> and am already dead. Ye stars, tis well, were thy last hour to come. This moment had been it, yet by thy shroud, I'll pull thee backward, squeeze thee to a bladder, till thou dost groan thy nothingness away. <laughs> the ghost retires. Thou fliest, is well. I thought what was the courage of a ghost, yet dare not, on thy life, why say I that, since life thou hast not, dare not walk again within these walls, on pain of the Red Sea. For if henceforth I ever find thee here, as sure, sure as a gun, I'll have thee laid. <laughs> Were the Red Sea a sea of Holland's gin, the liquor, when alive, whose very smell I detest, ee, did loathe, yet for the sake of Thomas Thumb, I would be laying therein. Ha! Huh, said you? Yes, my liege, I said, Tom Thumb, whose father ghost I am, once not unknown to mighty Arthur, but I see tis true. The dearest friend, when dead, we all forget. Tis he, it is the honest Gaffer Thumb. Oh, let me press thee in my eager arms, thou best of ghosts, thou something more than ghosts. Ah, uh, would I were something more that we again might feel each other in the warm embrace, oh. But now I have the advantage of my king, for I feel thee 
whilst thou dost not feel me. But say, thou dearest there, oh, say, what dread, important business sends thee back to earth? Oh, then prepare to hear, which but to hear is full enough to send thy spirit hence, thy subjects up in arms by grizzle led. Will ere the rosy fingers mourn shall ope the shutters of the sky before the gate of thy toil palace swarming spread. So I have seen the bees in clusters swarm. So I have seen stars in frosty nights. So I have seen sand in windy days. So I have seen ghosts on Pluto's shore. So I have seen flowers in spring arise. So I have seen leaves in autumn fall. So I have seen fruits in summer smile. So I have seen snow in winter frown. Then all thou hast seen, dost thou, beneath the shape of Gaffer Thumb, come hither to abuse me with similes to keep me on the rack? <laughs> Hence, or by all the torments of thy hell, I'll run thee through the body, though thou'st none. Arthur, beware! I must this moment hence, not frightened by your voice, nor by the cocks. Arthur, beware, 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 beware. Strive to avert thy impending fate. For if thou art killed today, tomorrow, all thy care will come too late. Scene three, <clears throat> King Solus. Oh, stay. And leave me not uncertain thus, and whilst thou tellest me what's like my fate, oh, teach me how I may avert it too. Cursed be the man who first a simile made, <laughs> cursed every bard who writes. So I have seen those whose comparisons are just and true, and those who liken things not like at all. The devil is happy that the whole creation can furnish out no simile to his fortune. Scene for king and queen. What is the cause, my Arthur, that you steal thus silently from Dalalala's breast? Why dost thou leave me in the dark alone, when well thou knowest I'm afraid of sprites? Oh, Dalalala, do not blame my love. I hoped the fumes of last night's punch had laid thy lovely eyelids fast. But oh, I find there is no power in drums to quiet wives. Each morn, as the returning sun, they wake and shine upon their husbands. Think, oh think, what a surprise it must be to the sun rising to find the vanished world away. What less can be the wretched wife's surprise when stretching out her arms to fold thee fast, she folds her useless bolster in her arms. Think, think on that. Oh, think, think well on that. I do remember also to have read in Dryden's Ovid's Metamorphosis that Jove in form inanimate did lie with beauteous Danae. And trust me, love, I feared the bolster might have been a Jove. Come to my arms, most virtuous of thy sex. Oh, Dolalola. For all wives like thee, so many husbands never had worn horns. Should Hunkamunka of thy worth partake, Tom Thumb indeed were blessed. O oh, fatal name, for didst thou know one quarter of what I know, then wouldst thou know, alas, what thou wouldst know. What can I gather hence? Why dost thou speak like men who carry rare shows about? Now you see, gentlemen, what you shall see? Oh, tell me more, or thou hast told too much. Scene five, King, Queen, and Noodle. Long life attend your majesty serene, great Arthur, King, and Dalalala, Queen. <laughs> Lord Grizzle, with a bold rebellious crowd advances to the palace threatening loud unless the princess be delivered straight and the victorious thumb without his pate 
They are resolved to batter down the gate. Scene six, king, queen, Hagamaka, and noodle. See where the princess comes. Where is Tom Thumb? Oh, sir, about an hour and a half ago, he sailed, he sallied out to enter with the foe and swore, unless his fate had him misled, from Grizzle's shoulders to cut off his head and served up with your chocolate in bed. Tis well. I find one devil told us both. Come, Dolalola, hunka munka, come. Within we'll wait for the victorious thumb. In peace and safety we secure my stay, while to his arm we trust the bloody fray. Though men and giants should conspire with gods, he is alone equal to all these odds. He is indeed a helmet to us all, while he supports... We need not fear to fall. His arm dispatches all things to our wish and serves up every foe's head in a dish. Boyd is the mistress of the house of care. While the good cook presents the bill of fare, whether the cod, that northern king of fish, or duck, or goose, or pig adorn the dish, no fears the number of her guests afford. But at her hour, she sees the dinner on the board. Scene seven, a plain, Lord Grizzle, Voodle, and Rebels. Thus far our arms with victory are crowned. For though we have not fought, we have yet found no enemy to fight withal. Ooh, yet I methinks, would willingly avoid this day, this first of April, to engage our foes. This day, of all the days of the year, I choose, for on this day my grandmother was born. Gods, I will make Tom Thumb an April fool, will teach his wit and errand it ne'er knew, and send it post to the Elysian shades. I'm glad to find our army is so stout nor does it move my wonder less than joy. Oh, what friends we have and how we have come so strong, I'll softly tell you as we march along. Scene eight, thunder and lightning. Tom Thumb, Tom Thumb, Glumdalka, come sweet. <laughs> oh, Noodle, hast thou seen a day like this? The unborn thunder rumbles over our heads as if the gods meant to unhinge the world and heaven and earth in wild confusion hurl, yet will I boldly tread the tottering ball. Merlin. What hey. noise is this I hear? Tom Thumb. Again it calls. Tom Thumb. It calls again. Appear. Wherever thou art, I fear thee not. Thou hast no cause to fear, I am thy friend. And by name, a conjurer by trade. And to my art, thou dost thy being owe. How? Hear then the mystic getting of Tom Thumb. His father was a plowman plain, his mother milked the cow. And yet the way they to get a son, this couple knew not how. <laughs> Until such time the good old man to learn it Merlin goes. And there to him in great distress in secret manner shows how in his heart he wished to have a child in time to come. To be his heir, though it might be no bigger than his thumb, of which old Mullen was foretold that he his wish should have, and so a son of stature small the charmer to him gave. Thou's heard the past, look up and see the future. Lost in amazement's gulf, my senses sink. See there, Glumdalka. See another me! Oh, sight of horror! See, you are devoured by the expanded jaws of a red cow. Let not these sights deter thy noble mind, for lo, a sight more glorious courts thy eyes. 
see far, uh, see from afar a theater arise. There, ages yet unborn shall tribute pay to the heroic actions of this day. Then, buskin tragedy at length shall choose thy name the best supporter of her muse. Enough! Let every warlike music sound. We fall contented if we fall renowned. <laughs> Scene 9, Lord Grizzle, Foodle, Rebels on one side, Tom Thumb, Glumdalka on the other. Oh, at length the enemy advances nigh. I hear them with my ear, I see them with my eye. Draw all your swords, for liberty we fight, and liberty the mustard is of life. Are you the man who men famed Grizzle name? Are you the much more famed Tom Thumb? The same. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Our worth upon ourselves will prove. For liberty I fight. And I for love. <laughs> A bloody engagement between the two armies here. Drums beating. Trumpets sounding. Thunder, lightning. They fight off and on. They fight off and on several times. Some fall. Grizzle and Glumdalka remain. Darn, coward, darn nor from a woman fly. Away, thou art too ignoble for my arm. Have at thy heart. Nay then, I thrust at thine. You push too well. You have run me through the guts, and I am dead. Then there's an end of one. When thou art dead, then there's an end of two, villain. <laughs> Tom Thumb. Rebel. Tom Thumb. Hell. Hunkamunka. Thou hast it there. Too sure I feel it. To hell then, like a rebel as you are, and give my service to the rebels there. <laughs> Triumph not, Thumb, nor think thou shalt enjoy thy Hunkamunka undisturbed. I'll send my ghost to fetch her to the other world. I'll send but bait at heaven and then return. But ha! I feel death rumbling in my brains. Some kinder sprite knocks softly at my soul and gently whisper it to haste away. I come. I come most willingly I come. So when some city wife or country heir to Hampstead or to Highgate does repair her to make haste, her husband does implore and cries, my dear, the coach is at the door with equal wish, desirous to be gone. She gets onto the coach and she cries, drive on. In those last words, he vomited his soul, which like whipped cream, the devil, it will swallow down, bear off the body and cut off the head which I will to the king in triumph lug, rebellion's dead, and now I'll go to bread with her. <laughs> Scene 10. King, queen, hunkamunka, and courtiers. Open the prisons, set the wretched free, and bid our treasurer disperse six pounds to pay their debts. Let no one weep today. Come, Dola Lola, curse that odious name. It is so long. It asks an hour to speak it by heavens. I'll change it into doll or log or any other civil monosyllable. That will not tire my tongue. Come, sit thee down. Here seated, let us view the dancer's sports. Bid him advance. This is the wedding day of Princess Hunkamunka and Tom Thumb. Tom Thumb, who wins two victories today and this way marches, bearing Grizzle's head. A dance. Oh, ho, ho, ho. monstrous, dreadful, terrible. Ooh, oh, ooh. Deaf be my ears, forever blind my eyes. Dumb be my tongue, feet lame, all senses lost. Howl wolves, grunt bears, hiss snakes, shriek all ye ghosts. What does the blockhead mean? I mean, my liege, only to grace my tail with decent horror. Whilst from my garret, twice two stories high, 
I looked abroad into the streets below. I saw Tom Thumb attended by the mob. Twice 20 shoe boys, twice two dozen links, chairmen and porters, hackney coachmen, whores. Aloft he bore the grisly head of Grizzle. When of a sudden through the streets there came a cow of larger than the usual size. And in a moment, guess, oh, guess the rest. And in a moment, swallowed up Tom Thumb. <laughs> Shut up again, the prisons. Bid my treasurer not give three farthings out. Hang all the culprits, guilty or not, no matter. Ravished virgins, go bid the schoolmasters whip all their boys. Let lawyers, parsons, and physicians loose to rob and pose on and to kill the world. Her majesty is in a swoon. Not so much in a swoon, but I have still strength to reward the messenger of ill news. Kills Noodle. Ah! Oh, I am slain. My lover is killed. I will revenge him so. Kills the queen. My yes. mama killed. Vile murthers beware. Kills Cleora. <laughs> oh, this for an old grudge. To thy heart. Kills Hunkamunka. <laughs> and this I drive to thine, O oh Doodle, for a new one. Kills Doodle. Ha! <laughs> Murderous vile. Take that. Kills Mustacha. And take thou this. <coughs> so, when the child... and falls. <coughs> so when the child who nurse from danger guards sends Jack for mustard with a pack of guards, kings, queens, and knaves throw one another down till the whole pack lies scattered in our throne. So all our pack upon the floor is cast. And all I boast is that I fall the last. He dies. <laughs> everybody <laughs> everybody just did everybody died <laughs> see it could have taken place in the overlook hotel <laughs> <laughs> <You're right. laughs>